There is a lot happening at the moment in the EU, with the gradual implementation of the EU Chemical Strategy for Sustainability into concrete legislative proposals. A lot of this has a prominent spot on the agenda for ChemCon Europe 2021 in London. To already get a taste of some important European topics and actions for industry, we will connect with Camille de Hestru from EPA in Brussels. Hi Camille! What are the most impactful changes industry can expect in the coming years? Hi Thiers, and thank you for inviting me. Indeed, there's a lot happening at the moment that will significantly impact the chemical industry in the coming years. Uh, what we will see first is a revision of the COP regulation. Here, we're looking at the publication of a proposal as soon as Q2 2022. Uh, the Commission actually just closed its feedback period on the inception impact assessment on the 1st of June and will now assess input it received as part of its impact assessment. Uh, the most impactful change here uh, will be the creation of new hazard classes and a categorization system under CLP for endocrine disruptors, one for human health, one for environment. Um, and actually there's a Caracal subgroup that's already started working on drafting these criteria and is already quite advanced. Uh, things are moving quickly there. New hazard classes will also be created under the CRP for PBT and VPVB, as well as for PMT and VPVM, and potentially a new categorization system as well there. So in parallel to the CRP workstream, the Commission is also working on the revision of the REACH regulation. Uh, it's the first time it's actually been completely reopened since its adoption. Uh, it will be a, a challenge to keep this revision on track uh, on the CSS priorities. However, um, here we can expect a proposal from the Commission by the end of 2022. So among other changes, it's a very broad uh, revision, um, the Commission notably wants to take advantage of this revision to introduce registration requirements for certain polymers and to require information on the environmental footprint of chemicals. The Commission also wants to extend the definition of substances of very high concern, SVHCs, by creating new categories of SVHCs under Article 57, namely for endocrine disruptors, without having to prove the equivalent level of concern, also for PMT and for VPVM. So it would widen the definition of SVHEs. Um, another very significant change, which is already quite controversial here, is the introduction of the mixture assessment factor, or factors, uh, depending if uh, there's one or several, in order to take into account the combination effect or cocktail effect of different chemicals. Uh, we can also mention here the reform of the REACH uh, restriction and authorization systems in order to operationalize the concept yet to be defined of essential use. Uh, uh, another a notable change will be the reattribution to ECA of the scientific assessments currently done under other pieces of legislation. So this work on the REACH revision is shared between DG Environment and DG Grow with the former being in charge of registration, mixture assessment factor and evaluation, and the latter leading the work on enforcement, authorization and restrictions. So the Commission is now assessing the input it received on the, the two inception impact assessments for CLP and REACH and launching preparatory studies in those uh, different aspects. Regarding authorization and restrictions, in which direction can we anticipate the system to evolve? This is a very good question. Uh, unfortunately, it's not possible to give you a definitive reply at the moment. What I can tell you now, however, is that the Commission is looking at operationalizing the concept of essential use as part of its reform of the two processes by creating easier or lighter requirements when a substance is recognized as essential. So for authorization, we are looking at two possible options. The first option is completely removing the authorization title from REACH. So that will be assessed as part of the REACH revision impact assessment. The second option would be not removing authorization completely, but merging it together with the REACH restriction system into one single system. So what would the, the new system look like if uh, the Commission chooses this option? Uh, so here we would have broad catch-all restrictions for large groups of substances. And within these broad restrictions, there would be two ways to get to derogation. So either a derogation would be granted for an essential use with a lighter regime, or companies could ask for a derogation in a grouped manner as a kind of a bundled authorization. Uh, that could actually look like more or less the current exemption system existing under ROS 
for hazardous substances used in electronics. Uh, regarding restrictions, in any case, in either revision option for the authorization system, we are looking at the trend towards wider restrictions on the model of what has been done recently for microplastics or what is currently prepared for PFAS. So the Commission wants to generalize these uh, catch-all restrictions in order to move faster, to be more efficient and to avoid regrettable substitution. So this is actually the first step towards a generic risk uh, approach. So we can accept such broad restrictions to target endocrine disruptors, PBT and VPVBs substances, but also other groups like immunotoxicants, neurotoxicants, uh, respiratory sensitizers, as well as substances affecting specific organs uh, as part of an upcoming restriction roadmap. In any case, broader restrictions mean more derogations in order to refine the scope. Um, the operationalization of the essential use criteria, once defined, will be key here uh, in order to obtain derogations. And uh, in that framework, the Commission will try to reverse the system by placing the burden of proof on industry to justify why they need a derogation. Again, here we see a kind of a Ross model with a broad substance ban and exemptions granted in a bundled way for companies and only for a limited time. Now on the registration side, do we already have a more precise idea of which polymers would require registration? Yes, so this is an ongoing work stream with, for instance, a meeting of the Caracal subgroup of polymers planned for 22nd of June to discuss this topic exactly, which polymers require or do not require registration. Certain polymers will be identified as requiring registrations, therefore the PRR status. Inversely, other uh, criteria will be set to obtain the polymer of low concern status, PLC status. So ECA will have to be notified of the PRR, non-PRR or PLC status of polymers, and also should certain polymers be recognized as precursors to PRRs. So the Commission is refining the structure as we speak, together with the Caracal subgroup members. So this is not set in stone and there's still time for stakeholders with specific interest to mobilize, take action, put forward their, their expertise. Uh, we can already, however, outline from the preparatory work that, for instance, the molecular weight and the water absorption capacity will be taken into account uh, as key criteria with, for instance, low molecular weight and high absorption capacity polymers qualifying more easily as polymers requiring registration. Uh, in addition, any hazard classification will also mean exclusion from the polymer of low concern category. Both the current hazard classification existing under the CRP and as soon as they are adopted, the new hazard classifications to be adopted under CRP, as we mentioned, endocrine disruptors, PPT, VPVB, as well as PMT and VPVM hazard classes. So this is valid both for polymers and polymers likely to degrade or to depolymerize into substances with such hazard classifications. Uh, there's some grouping approaches too, however, with for instance the creation of a dynamic list of approved polyesters that could qualify as polymers of low concern. And uh, in addition, based on information notified to, to ECA or any additional evidence, Member states can also initiate substance evaluation if they believe a certain polymer is of concern. So, even if uh, there will be exemptions for non-PRRs and for polymers of low concern, the registration obligations for polymers requiring registrations, PRRs, will create uh, inevitably a significant burden and cost for companies. So these have to be anticipated and the current work on defining the criteria therefore very closely monitored uh, as it's still happening now with the upcoming meeting on 22nd of June. More broadly, what can we expect from the safe and sustainable design for chemicals in the EU chemical strategy for sustainability? Yes, this is an extremely interesting point, as indeed the sustainability by design idea concerns the CSS, but also goes much further. Um, in the CSS, strictly speaking, we have the notion of setting safe and sustainable by design criteria for chemicals and materials. So actually the Commission organized a stakeholder workshop already in March this year. Then the Commission's DGRTD published a mapping study of existing initiatives 
and best practices as a source of inspiration of how the system could work in the EU. And now uh, the Commission actually launched a survey on the state uh, of, of play and, and sustainable by design criteria for, for chemicals, which is open until the 30th of June. So it's still possible to participate in the study in the coming month. Uh, there's not a lot of time left, so I still uh, encourage any stakeholders interested in the CSS to go to the survey and, and share their expertise on the topic before the deadline on the 30th of June. So this is really important as uh, the Commission is collecting data on, for instance, which policy sectors should be the primary focus of developing such criteria. Should it be consumer products such as food contact material, toys, cosmetics, detergents? Or should it be other uh, materials or chemicals identified in the CSS? For instance, uh, the Commission names construction materials or um, chemicals used in batteries, chemicals used in renewable energy sources, wind turbines and so on. Uh, in addition to which policy sectors should be targeted, the Commission also wants to hear from uh, stakeholders about their opinion on the different implementation options. So should it be just a best practice scheme? Should it be a certification scheme? Should it go to labeling or any regulatory initiatives? So there's different ways to implement those criteria. criteria. And uh, also interesting to know that further in the sustainability pillar, we have the possible in introduction of environmental footprints of chemicals in the REACH information requirements, even though there's still questions about the best way to integrate this. But basically, the, the overall philosophy is not only restricting hazardous chemicals, but also non-sustainable chemicals on the basis of the information collected. And this is also interesting because beyond the CSS, we see similar trends, for instance, in the circular economy policies. Uh, the Commission just closed its public consultation last week on the Sustainable Products Initiative, which will revise the eco-design criteria. Uh, and possibly include substances banned from the design stage in order to protect users, uh, but also to facilitate end-of-life treatments uh, and recycling. In the new batteries regulation proposal, currently in the ordinary legislative procedure of the Parliament and the Council, we see again these patterns of banning certain substances from the design stage. Uh, actually, the, the batteries regulation proposal even goes further in sustainable design requirements as it creates new obligations for uh, carbon footprint declaration and uh, mandatory recycled content in certain materials for certain types of uh, batteries. All this to say that sustainable by design will have enormous impact on companies in many sectors. So this policy focus is here to stay and in order to better anticipate what is coming in the next few years, we can already analyze the first uh, operationalization of these sustainability requirements first in the batteries regulation proposal, which is on the table today, to better prepare what will come tomorrow under the Sustainable Products Initiatives and afterwards in the CSS implementation of the safe and sustainable criteria for chemicals and uh, materials. Camille, thanks a lot. I cannot wait to hear more about this in October in London. For now, enjoy summer.